All right. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be just doing my makeup and chatting with you guys. I haven't done a chit chat style video in a while. Um, and I asked you guys on Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you're probably missing out on a lot because I'm not, hold on, let me fix this. Been detoxing on Twitter and pulling back from YouTube. Instagram is probably the least bad for my mental health. <laughs> so anywho, um, I asked you guys on Instagram to let me know how you guys were doing. Just do a quick check in. I don't really um, do a lot of these types of videos where we just sit and chat. And lately I've just been feeling like being a little bit more transparent. You know, this quarantine has not only helped us to just kind of rest and take a step back from our regular life, but also you guys know I'm very introspective. And if I have more time to myself, that's what I tend to do is self-evaluate and because I always want to be a better person. Um, I've always been aware of the fact that I'm withdrawn, like socially even though i am i feel like a social person i do consider myself a little bit outgoing i'm not super super outgoing but i'm also not an introvert per se um but as far as like how i really really feel and how like my emotions are and like where i am mentally i tend to withdraw so that leaves people feeling a little bit like they can't be they can't get to know me like they feel like they can't connect with me on that level um and because it's social media and obviously i'm here you know to i don't know be a light i would hope that i am um i, I don't like to just leave you guys hanging and make you feel like i don't really care about talking about anything and i don't want you guys to think that i don't care about you all and I know that this is a very hard time for a lot of people. So I figured that this would be a great way for me to kind of just chat with you guys to open up in a way that I don't normally do. Don't normally do. That's not, that's double negative, ain't it? But you know what I'm trying to say. Let me go here and find these questions on my phone. Um, but I do want to do my makeup today and I do want to try some new products. I did get a box from Fenty with the new Fenty cheek blushes, uh, the forget the name of them but I'll we'll go through that in a second so yeah I said I'm going to be doing a physical and mental health update check-in video where we can chat and talk about life my goal is to not only share where I'm at but hopefully give advice and more to be more candid with you all um, I'm gonna just be talking about mental health physical health just health in general just because I feel like this is a time to focus on those things uh, whatever whatever comes up comes up you know what I'm saying this isn't like a formal health update or mental health video it's just gonna be a chat so feel free to chat with me I guess so I probably won't be doing too much talking in this video about the makeup because I do want to make sure that I'm staying focused on what I'm talking about so if I don't interject and say what I'm using everything will be linked in the description box gonna start off with a primer though per the usual um, and the primer that I'm going to use is the Fenty one where is it at Fenty true matte primer how do you deal with emotional roller coasters one moment up the next down um I kind of honestly I know exactly what you're talking about I feel like during this whole quarantine where we've been locked in the house can't go anywhere kind of like forced to deal with ourselves I have been on an emotional emotional roller coaster the entire time it's like every other day I'm good one day I'm good, then maybe like the next day I'll be like freaking out. Not freaking out, but just like, ugh, like all over the place emotionally. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I am in the house more. And when I am in the house more, I tend to, um, like I said, when I'm alone, I tend to get more withdrawn. And so I feel like if I don't actually wake up every day with a purpose in mind, that's what typically throws me off balance. Um, so I've tried to, I'm adding a little more primer, I've tried, I've tried to wake up every day and give myself a purpose. I think that helps to kind of guide my day and keep my brain from turning on itself. And when I, I'm going to say this a lot because I've been saying it to myself a lot, don't let your brain turn on itself. For me, I know if I sit down and I think too hard or I think too much about stuff, if I overthink, I can overthink myself into my brain turning on itself and basically what I mean by that is I can be in a positive state of mind and then if I think too hard I can put myself in a negative state just by thinking negative thoughts over and over again and then I feel myself reverting back to this 
pessimistic, cynical, critical person um, where I'm just overly critical and overly just just thinking way too hard about myself and processing things in a way that is not help healthy. I, you know, I highly recommend renewing your mind every day. And by renewing your mind, I mean like waking up and praying and reading your Bible, meditating. That is renewing your mind every single day. And the days I don't do that and I just wake up and I go scroll through Instagram and talk about how much I want to go on vacation. Um, this is the foundation I'm using. And just sulk and mope and you know, not really give myself a task or a goal for the day. Because honestly, my workload has kind of died down. I'm not really working as much as I was before. Plus, I don't have nowhere to go. Usually, my day is surrounded by different things that I need to do. If I don't have nothing to do and nowhere to go, then I wake up and I'm like, what am I doing today? Like, I mean, not, not that it's a bad thing to not have stuff to do, but at the same time, if I don't have a goal for the day, I will sit and just think about how much I don't like where I'm at. So giving myself a goal and just trying to be as productive as possible, even if, even if the productivity is just cleaning an area of the house, I don't know, organizing something, giving myself something to look forward to every day because otherwise my brain will turn on itself. And then the next question is how to not fall victim to negative, vo negative vices. Uh, drugs, alcohol, etc. I don't have addictions, um, and I'm, and I don't, I never been around people who've had addictions like that. I didn't grow up in an addiction home. I, you know, I've heard of it, but I don't. I've never seen it firsthand. I guess that's a blessing. It is a blessing, actually, um, that I haven't had to experience that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, whenever I feel like I'm, you know, losing control of myself, I don't like to add on to that so i don't do things that make me lose control um i tried to drink my feelings one time and it did not work <laughs> um but for me i i because i am such a control freak I, I wouldn't say control freak but i do like to be in control and i like to be in control of my own body as well um and the few times that i have tried to i guess lo loosen up by using those kind of vices, I did not like it at all. Oh my God, drank my feelings one time, hated it, threw up everywhere. I've tried a drug before, I'm not gonna say which one, not gonna say what form, not gonna say, but I have tried it as a way, as a means to like kind of let go. And I hated not being in control of my own thoughts and my own brain. Um, I just, I don't like that personally, I don't, I just don't. And then also, you know, as a Christian, I just feel like when you're opening up your mind, you open yourself up to anything. So spiritually, it's like putting yourself at risk. You know, when you're not, when your guard is let down like that and you physically cannot control what's going on around you or you physically cannot control what's going in and out of your brain, your thoughts, your actions, you can't control your actions, you are setting yourself up. To me, it just, it doesn't help my mental process. It doesn't help me to feel better. It doesn't help me cope. Because once you come down from being drunk or high or whatever, your life's still the same. And I don't like being out of my mind. I just like, I like to be in control of my thoughts. And I like that my my thoughts and my actions and emotions are filtered when I'm sober. Even if, even if I'm just at home by myself or just with Cam, I don't even want to be in that space because I like to remember things. I have this thing about memory that I'm very, very particular about. I like to remember things. I'm very big on nostalgia and memory. Yeah, even if we're having fun or something, I like to be able to remember it so I wanna be sober. Or at least sober enough to remember what's happening. You know what I'm saying? So for me, when I'm sad or upset, I don't gravitate towards things that are gonna make me lose myself. I actually prefer when I'm sad or upset to just feel the feelings. I let the feelings happen and I let myself feel things. I give myself that opportunity because I feel like if you don't, then you end up bottling things up and you end up like blowing up later. For me, I prefer to actually feel things when I need to feel them and then let it go. After that, it's over. I, I've had my couple hours of being emotional and then I move on. I cry it out, move on. I spend a lot of my life dismissing my own feelings. So I feel like now that I'm older, I just let myself feel it. Let's use, we're gonna use, we're gonna use Huda today. How has this pandemic affected you mentally? 
Um, I feel like it's making me more aware of the negative thoughts that have been in my brain. Like I said, I do have a tendency to kind of dismiss my own feelings. Um, especially when there's a lot going on and I feel like I don't have the time to really like sit down and feel things. Now I have the time. So it's, it's allowing me to con kind of confront those feelings and like really assess like, sis, why do you act like that? Why do you feel like that? Blah, blah, blah. Because I have somebody else in my space all the time now, it's kind of forced me to really like, because if you don't know anything about relationships, relationships are mirrors, okay? So if you are stuck in the house with other people in this quarantine, you know what I'm talking about. I just realized a lot of things about myself that I don't necessarily enjoy. I guess I would say that this is affecting me in a way that I need to address a lot of things that I don't like about myself, which I've been doing for the past like six years. Um, but I think this is a little bit more amplified and I'm realizing what I need to do to move to the next step of my life. So it's been very eye-opening, but I also feel like um, mentally during this pandemic, I've realized how strong I am too. I handle crises by not freaking out. Um, I'm a very good not freak outer, so I haven't been very like scared or worried about anything during the pandemic. I just feel like I have been um, more so just a little bit frustrated with myself like I'm not afraid of the the virus I'm not afraid to go outside and get some fresh air and obviously you know I'm, I'm being safe but I'm not like I'm not really worried about anything that I feel like most people are worried about the only thing that's really like weird is that I know life is not going to go back to normal so mentally for me I'm just trying to prepare for coming out of this because I know that things are going to be different so just trying to like I said work on myself and make sure I'm preparing myself mentally for whatever changes come from this quarantine because I feel like I feel like the whole world has shut down and it's not going to be easy coming out of this on the other side of this things are going to be much different so I'm just preparing myself mentally for that I think. My thoughts on therapy. I think therapy is is uh, very important actually. I don't have like a professional therapist per se. Like I don't, I don't go to a therapist. I've been considering it, but I also, you know, I'm very particular about who I let into my mental space like that. I can't trust everybody, especially not, and it's not even that I can't trust people like I have secrets or whatever. I don't have secrets, I just, want to be able to discuss things with someone who understands my life. I have a very unique life, I feel like, as a preacher's, like, third generation preacher's kid slash preacher's wife, plus being online, being, I'm not famous, but hyper visible, basically. I'm hyper visible on and offline. So I feel like I need someone who, who kind of understands all of those aspects of life. I mean, I haven't really looked but I don't really know if they're out there. So that's really the only thing that's kept me from actually going to a real like professional therapist. But I do have people in my life that I consider therapists and I have specific people who can talk to me about specific things. Like I have pastor's wives that I'm friends with. I also have uh, preacher's kids that I'm cool with who can I can talk things through with. I also consider, I have some people um, that I know who are in like the medical field who have experienced some of the things that I've experienced with my body um, and just a lot of different things that I go through in that aspect too. I also have a lot of married people in my life that who can speak to that. So I, I don't necessarily have one specific therapist but I do have multiple people who I talk to about things that I go through and they help me out tremendously. Yeah I wouldn't say that I have one therapist but I do have many many and people in my tribe and I think tribes are very important so uh somebody asked your coping strategies to help manage your feelings the main thing that I do to manage my feelings is allow myself to feel that's number one because I struggled with that for a long time growing up I never really knew how to let myself feel things you know like I don't have a hot temper I don't really get emotional like that as far as like being outwardly emotional I get emotional about things but I try to move on from it quickly in order to like just go on with my life and not be paralyzed by my emotions and my feelings but nowadays because I don't have anything else to do I don't have a lot of distractions to lean on you know I can't 
like leave the house, go hang out, go out to eat, do the do the normal things that I would do. In some cases, it's not a good thing to isolate, but in the case of my feelings and dealing with my emotions, I do try to isolate just so that I'm not being, I don't wanna be a burden to anyone, but I also don't wanna be outlandish or say things I don't mean. Um, Cause I just, I feel like that doesn't help. Let me stop, hold on. I was supposed to use this Fenty stuff. Okay, Fenty sent me a package. This is the, they sent me the cream blushes and the cream bronzers. I'm so mad I didn't use the cream bronzer. What was I doing? All right, we're gonna use this, the cream brush, blush, blush, blushes. This is the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blush. I like this one that's on her. This is Summertime Wine. I'm obviously not gonna be able to try all of them. Let's just try two for now. I'm so sad, I don't have any nails. So I can't open things. I do have press-ons, but I haven't put them on yet because I actually like typing without nails. So a little lost on what to do here. It's a catch-22. Don't know if I want to put the nails on and be able to open things or leave the nails off and be able to touch things. They're really tiny. I did not expect these to be so small. These are the colors that I'm going to be using. Let's see how this does. It's actually coming off nice. Ooh. It's, it's sheer enough to where it's not too dark. Okay, yeah, so if you use your finger, it's probably gonna be a little bit more pigmented. I like that they're not super shiny, even though they're cream. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Yeah, it's real rosy. We're just about to be really, really blushy today, so. Yeah, this one's a lighter. I like this one too. Mmm. Not really a blush person. But I mean, they're cute though. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rose latte one. I'm gonna take this rose latte one and I'm just gonna use the same brush and just go over my, my crease area with it. Okay, okay Fenty, you don't disappoint. I'm just gonna go over this with my foundation brush just to blend this out a little bit because I feel like I put too much on. I have this new Moon Dust from Urban Decay. You can try this. It's Lithium Moon Dust Eyeshadow. Somebody asked if you were diagnosed with depression and getting out was your therapy. Now what? Hashtag trapped. Um, I feel like this is a lot of people's story right now. I don't I don't claim to have depression um, like clinically or anything like that. I also don't claim to have clinical anxiety or you know, I don't I don't get treated for it or anything like that. But I do know what it feels like to be trapped in your own mind. Try to make your home an oasis. Um, you know, obviously, if you're in a situation where there are people or things in your house that are that cause you to feel depressed or to cause you to, you know, have those kind of feelings. Um, the best thing you can do is try to make an oasis wherever you are. Try to take care of yourself best as possible. Like I said, wake up and give yourself a goal in mind. One of the things that helps me to not be so focused on how I feel and my emotions is to stop thinking about myself. And I know that that sounds kind of like preachy. A lot of times when you're trapped in your own mind, it's because you don't think about anything but your thoughts and you and yourself. Um, it would help to just try to think about things to be grateful for. If you have a gratitude journal, I know people gratitude journal, journaling in general um, helps. But like I said, being being focused on a bigger cause, being focused on something, you do want to self-care, but being focused on yourself all of the time is unhealthy because we're not put on this earth for ourselves. We're not put on this earth just to be happy. I don't believe that. I don't believe we're put on this earth just to take care of ourselves and that's it. Because then what's the point of having other people in our lives? Why can't I get this out? <laughs> Y'all, I can't open things. Your impact on life, on other people's lives, how you make a difference matters more than anything. And I think um, that's very important to focus on. So maybe find something that makes you feel like you're giving back and you're and you're promoting something positive doing something that makes you get up every morning but yeah thinking about yourself and your problems is what makes you feel like that and feel kind of caved in so kind of like looking outward and seeing what you can do to be positive to help others to be a light to someone somehow some way 
yeah and then creating oasis so i would suggest getting some like plants if you're into plants uh learning how to take care of them eating good foods um you know kind of creating a nice environment where you would like like you would if you would go out so like whatever you like to do i'm gonna use my finger for this whatever you like to do when you go out of the house Try to do it at home. Find a way to do it at home. Find something that you like to do that you can immerse yourself in, like a hobby or playing Sims. I don't know. Just try to find something that gets you out of your own head. Because drinking water and eating your vegetables will alleviate so much of how you feel. Trust me. The days that I eat right, take my supplements, drink all my water, I feel a million times better than the days that I don't. Actually, a lot of people are not aware of some foods and things that trigger them. Um, it can trigger depression and anxiety symptoms if you are not careful. So please make sure you're eating healthy foods for your body. Um, that's number one. Also, exercising, breathing, stretching in the morning. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a specialist or anything. This is just things that I feel like help me. But somebody asked Bible verses that are helping me during this time. Um, I have three that I read very frequently. If not every day, I try to read them every other day or as often as possible. Joshua 1, 9, that's my favorite. Also, uh, Psalm 91 and 1. Which one is the one that says, be still? I think it's Psalm 40 something. I don't remember the exact, um, but those are my favorite ones that I like to read because they're very encouraging to me and they remind me that God is in control no matter what. How have I altered my creative process and approach to content? Over the years, I've learned not to rely so much on randomness and like random spurts of motivation and inspiration to guide my creative process. Um, growing up, I always have been a creative person, but I kind of just didn't have any structure to it. And I was just kind of doing whatever I felt like doing when I felt like doing it. Now, because it's my job to be creative and I have to do a lot of creative work. I find myself relying less on being inspired and motivated and more on preparation and discipline. It's hard to be creative on demand. Like even though it can be your job and you're expected to be creative all the time, as a creative person, you're not always creative. Like you don't always have creative ideas. You're not always ready to jump when they say jump, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's hard sometimes because you're asked to do things even if you may not be in a creative space. And especially for me right now during this quarantine, I don't feel creative at all. A lot of my creativity comes from the element of control and being in control of my my emotions, my feelings, my surroundings, you know? And when things like this are happening, we're in the middle of a pandemic um, and I, my control is kind of taken from me. I feel like a lot of my freedom to be creative is taken too. Uh, mentally, I'm just not creative right now. I'm not there. What I do is I, I set up systems. Um, I have reminders in my phone and I'll make a, um, like a set list, if you will. I write down everything I need. I write down what I'm going to shoot, where I'm going to shoot it. Um, and then I try to prioritize it with times, like giving myself time stamps. Like, okay, on today, I'm doing this. Tomorrow, I'm doing that. I need to have this done by Friday, so let me do this on Wednesday. And then giving myself breaks in between. That helps with me, like, with my creative process so that by the time I actually have to sit down and create, all of the preliminary stuff is done and everything is organized in my mind already because I have it typed out. I have a list of things I need to say, a list of things I need to do while I'm creating. So I'm not just, like, doing everything off the top of my head. I actually think I want to use one of these cream contours for my eyeshadow i'm gonna use chocolate this is chocolate mm, yes color pigmentation yes okay and just kind of like not i'm not sweeping so much i'm just kind of pressing that into my crease area oh and then if you need resources for organizing things um I have a video on the apps that I like to use for productivity. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, I made it last year, at the beginning of last year, and it, it will give you a guide to how I set up my calendar, how I set up my reminders, and use Trello for project management. I also have people who hold me accountable as well. Um, so I have a manager who holds me accountable for 
um, all of my projects and stuff. So she helps with my creative process as well. So yeah, it helps to have people who can help guide your, guide your thoughts. Somebody said, has gaining weight helped your health overall physically and mentally? So for those of y'all who don't know, I haven't been on a weight gain journey per se. I've been more on a just holistic health trying to get my health in order journey and that journey does include gaining weight but not like for not just for physical purposes but actually because I was malnourished and almost underweight I started my journey in 2017 so yeah about three years ago I started this journey um and really what it has come down to is just trying to eat better eat more whole foods and less gluten and sugar in the past couple years i've been trying to eat more vegetables trying to you know take better care of my body i've also been working out um getting a little bit of muscle mass but i've really just been trying to rely on my food to gain weight i have not been taking any weight gain anything so no epitamin no um like weight gain supplements or anything like that my the supplements that i do take are strictly for just filling in what i don't get from my diet and the working out is only so that i can increase my appetite so i can eat more but yeah so if you guys are wondering what i did to gain weight nothing crazy i literally just eat like i just eat i eat foods that are actually good for my body um you would be surprised what you can accomplish when you eat food that actually is good for you um and like i said in the video where if you guys want to watch those videos and you haven't seen them already i do have a whole playlist but one of the main goals for that journey is to nourish my body um and if your body is nourished your brain functions better your emotions and your hormones are not all over the place um, and you can uh, easy more easily address any health issues that you have and a lot of times our mental health is attributed to a lack of something or something that we don't need in our diet. If you have an allergy to something, it won't. It, it might not even manifest as a physical allergy. It might manifest as a mental allergy. Certain foods, especially processed food, and um, a lot of gluten, meat, eating a lot of red meat, um, things like that can affect your hormones and then can affect your mental health. I will say in this quarantine, I have been relapsing a little bit just because I haven't been eating like I should. It has become increasingly difficult to maintain my physical health without going out to eat. Going out to eat is my love language. I'm sorry. I like to go out to eat. I think I messed up my eyeshadow. I'm pretty sure I did. Let's see. Pros and cons for seeking a holistic versus modern doctor for women's health. Um, I guess I guess a con for getting a holistic doctor would be that there aren't that many available. Um, so you might be um, searching a little bit longer. Another con for holistic approach is that holistic doctors are more expensive and nine times out of 10, you cannot use insurance to cover uh, the fees for. Um, I don't really have any pros for not going with a holistic doctor i would definitely uh suggest it and i recommend it i love my doctor i will put all her information in the description box but she's amazing i love her they treat the whole body and not just focus on one area not only will you be fixing whatever issue that you are focused on but you'll also be fixing a multitude of issues at the same time where are my eyeshadow palettes what am i doing oh here we go here's one here's one here's one yeah 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 yeah, yeah, I'm gonna use this brown. How to heal from losing friends when you have done nothing to the person. I think losing friends in general is just hard. Um, as life goes on, you learn that some people are just for specific seasons in your life and they're not going to always be in your life. That's just life. You go through different things, different seasons in your life and different people meet the needs that you have for those particular seasons. It doesn't always mean something bad when you distance from a friend or when you end a friendship but even if you do distance for a reason or you know y'all end y'all friendship because of a fight or argument or just differences that you can't seem to work out it's always going to be hard it's always going to be hard to move on and i don't think people talk about this enough side effects of losing um friendships especially when they are people in your life that you thought you were gonna have in your life forever or people that you valued it's it's hard it's definitely hard um and as a, as a preacher's kid growing up, I didn't really have a lot of solid friendships. Um, and when I did have them, 
they tend to end after a period of time because as my life has progressed, as my life has changed and I go through different things in my life, there are people who can't relate to it and they don't understand it and it sometimes it can ter deter them um, but it ends up bringing new people in my life. So I feel like the first thing that I had to stop doing was stop trying to hold on past their expiration date um, and just come to terms with the fact that this person is not meant to be in my life forever and that's it. There's like a grieving process. It's like first you're in denial and then you accept it and then you like grieve and then you move on, you know? Um, so I think number one would be like just accepting um, and I have to keep moving forward. I can't dwell on this. I like that with red better, yes. But yeah, I, I definitely think there is a process to it, um, but everybody's process will look and feel a lot different and if it's okay if it takes you a while I've also learned to pray to just pray for those people and love them from a distance and I also think that when you let people go um, and you allow people to move forward with their life and you move forward with yours you are allowing new people to come into your life be open to moving into more healthy and um, beneficial relationships that are going to build you up and not tear you down you know it sucks to lose a friend but at the same time you grow and you learn from every relationship um and so for me i just try to look at the bright side of things i know it sucks right now that i don't have that person in my life anymore but new people will come and they'll be able to speak to where i am now better than that person might have been able to so giving yourself time time heals a lot of wounds recognize that you are grieving and that's okay you just you know continue to pray for them pray for their well-being pray for their health pray for their safety and pray that they also find better people in their life um, that they can they can trust and depend on and that can help them through whatever it is they're going through but at the end of the day it is what it is you know my heart is not burdened by unforgiveness because it can slow your healing process if you don't forgive people. So I definitely think that forgiveness is key. Forgive them, forgive yourself. Even if you did nothing wrong, even if that person is the one who hurt you, even if. A lot of times we don't even realize what we did wrong in a situation um, and recognizing what you did wrong in the situation is definitely key as well to just like recognizing that, okay, not only do they deserve forgiveness, but I deserve forgiveness too. And that's just the, the fact of the matter. There's nothing that's gonna make it less hard. So you just gotta go through it. And I also think depending on the magnitude of the friendship and what that person brought to your life and, and how long they were in your life, you know, although you may move forward, there might be a sore, so soft spot in your heart forever. There's gonna be a scar there. You can't replace people. I don't believe you can replace people. I believe people come in your life and they make an impression on you and then that impression is there until you leave this earth and that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing i think you can remember them in a positive way not to like be in denial about what happened but you can remember them in a positive way and think about the good things that came out of that relationship and the things that you learned from that relationship to where you don't regret it because i think living with regret and resent resentment is what also keeps you in a space to where you can't heal so for me healing doesn't look like I just forgot that person existed no you're not gonna ever forget they existed I don't think that that's healing I think healing is recognizing that you know oh I, I love them and I miss them but we're not for each other anymore and being okay with that and moving forward with your life and being able to think about them without crying I think those are that's the key healing it doesn't have to be cutting somebody off and pretending they never existed and pretending like it, it doesn't hurt you anymore. Healing can be, I still feel sad about this sometimes, but I know that I'm better where I am now and I know what I learned from it and I've grown from it. Have I been working out during this quarantine? No, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it and act like I've, you know, been just on it, eating right, working out. Like, it's definitely affected me in a negative way. When I do get there, I'll let you know. Um, but for the most part, uh. <laughs> how to proactively deal with anxiety if you have any experience with that 
I do have a little bit of experience with anxiety. I, I won't say that I deal with anxiety like some people do. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think I have it really bad or anything like that. Things that help, him, help me with anxiety is breathing. I recognize that I actually do have like a real breathing problem. Um, my doctor said I have an extra heartbeat, which is crazy. Um, and I also know that I have very high stress resistance. So I have a tendency to neglect when I'm stressed or not even know when I'm stressed. I can get so stressed out without knowing it that it's too late by the time I realize I'm stressed. So I actively try to recognize when I am stressed and take time to myself to um, recharge mentally. Uh, and I also try to do stress relieving activities such as breathing exercises, um, stretching and breathing through it. I literally have to coach myself through breathing because for some reason, I don't breathe right. Like I hold my breath all the time and I be tense and I don't even realize it. I notice that when I eat healthy, I'm definitely not as anxious as I usually am um, when I don't eat right. So how do you manage overthinking? To be honest, I haven't figured that one out yet. And when I do, I'll let y'all know. Um, you know, the Bible says to cast your cares on Jesus and to pray um, when you're overthinking. And that's literally the only thing I can think of that I actually do when I feel like I'm overthinking is I just pray for clarity and for God to show me what I actually should be worried about in the moment. Clearly, I have a tendency to overthink everything. So yeah, like I said, I haven't figured out how to not overthink, but when I do, I'll let y'all know. <laughs> Even though I'm working from home, I still feel lazy. Have you had to make a detailed routine? Like I said, with my creative process, I do tend to be a little bit more structured these days, but that's only because I have deadlines. If I don't have a deadline for something, I let myself get to it when I get to it. I'm very gracious with that. Um, and I'm also very aware of my energy and how much energy I exp expend, is that the word? When I have to get something done, you know? Uh, so I typically, because I, I've been working from home for so long, I'm not really afraid of being lazy. I don't look at it as laziness. I look at it as giving myself time. I'm a, I'm a really good rester and I, I, I urge people to rest all the time. It is okay to not be doing something. It is okay to not have anything to do today. Give yourself time to chillax, bruh. There's nothing wrong with that. I have a lot of friends who are workers. They love to work, they're workaholics. And I, I get so frustrated with them because I'm like, guys, you cannot work all day, every day. You need time to rest. Chill out, bro, like sit down somewhere. Get somewhere and sit down. Remember your mom used to tell you to do that? As an adult, we are all on punishment right now during this quarantine. We're all grounded. We can't go nowhere. We can't do nothing. We can't hang out with our friends. So what do you do when you're grounded? Get somewhere and sit down. That's what we're all doing right now. So it is okay if you don't have anything else to do. It's okay if you don't have a set routine. Okay, these are ColourPop lashes. Uh, this is the style Mommy. I don't know if I like these, but they're on, so too late now but yeah if you don't feel productive then do things that make you feel productive and once you've run out of things to do chill like i said productive doesn't have to mean starting a new business venture making new hobbies it doesn't have to be anything that big it could literally just be folding your clothes and organizing all your clothes it's okay if you just sit on on the couch watching netflix all day one day so me asked um have i gotten used to cam being home and am i going to miss the extra time spent together. Honestly, me and Cam spend a lot of time together in general. When he was going to work, he wasn't going to work every single day. He was working from home sometimes too. Okay, I need to hurry up and finish. I only have 15 minutes left on my memory card. Um, That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with you guys. I just wanted to share some updates and talk to you guys about some things, you know, just talking about mental health and keeping yourself up during this time. I know it's a very hard and stressful time for a lot of people. I can't imagine what some of you all are going through that have lost your jobs or um, you know, lost loved ones during this time. A lot of people um, that I know have lost loved ones. Um, so it's just kind of like a very weird and unpredictable time right now. But the main thing you can do for yourself is just take care of yourself Try to make the most of this time you have to just get yourself, your life in order the best that you can, you know, and focus on what you can control and try not to focus on the things that you can't. So 
wrapping this up, I'm just going to use my favorite lip pencil, which is Chestnut by MAC. My favorite uh, Pixie lippy. I want to try a new one, but uh, I ain't got time. I can't find one, so. And a lip gloss. This is Urban Decay. Uh, Midnight Cowgirl. Yep, Midnight Cowgirl. I didn't highlight. Who am I? What the heck? Right, Chiang. This is Dose of Colors. I'm just going to put a little bit on. I'm not going to really do anything crazy. So that's it. Um, I hope that you guys are taking care of yourselves. Like I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys. I hope you guys are being safe and taking care of yourselves. All right. Bye. I didn't put on bottom mascara. This is just a mess.